What's up, fellas? So I had a loyal patron supporter that wanted me to break down all the aspects of money. Okay, guys? He wanted me to explain exactly how money works. And, you know, fuck, you know, listen, listen. I, t I told you guys, I got to give my purpose guys a bone every now and then. You know, they be loyal and all that, and I got to get them some, you know, they probably, some of the guys already be married or got steady girls. And they sit and they just wait for that one purpose video every couple of months. And I got to feed it to them every now and then, guys. So here it is. All right, guys. So let me break this down. I want to go through all the dynamics of how money works. Um, first off the bat, guys, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Shout out to Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, never read the book, by the way. But uh, somebody got, I don't know if it's him. Or somebody who works with him, but somebody on YouTube got a um, the quadrant breakdown of the quadrant, okay? And so he also wrote several books besides Rich Dad Poor Dad. He also got one called the um, Quadrant, right? Somebody was breaking down on YouTube. And uh, guys, I typically stay away from uh, philosophy books. Uh, I don't really like philosophy books. Uh, I call them, I think I'm a great philosopher, and so I don't want other people's way of thinking to cloud my judgment right so that's why if y'all guys wonder y'all guys know i don't read a lot of books i'll read something that's educational but not something that's philosophical and the reason for that guys is um philosophical is is like the way you see the world and the way things work so it's like this is why you'll see a lot of people disagree with dave ramsey because that's his philosophy right in aspects of making money, it's philosophy. Warren Buffett has a philosophy. Dave Ramsey has a philosophy. Robert Kiyosaki has a philosophy. It's not fact. It's just their opinion on the best way of going about accumulating wealth, right? Stuff like that, um, you know, like I try to read dating coaches. Uh, shout out Corey Wayne and shout out uh, Rolo Tomasi. And I quickly stopped right after that. Reason being, guys, when I read stuff like that, and not knocking old guys, I'll disagree with 75% of it. And so, you know, that's my issue when I deal with philosophy is that that's why I don't get into it that much. Because when I read that type of stuff, I disagree with 75, at least 50%. Because I have my own way of thinking. That's why y'all see a lot of my opinions differ from a lot of the dating coaching stuff. Because it's all philosophy. It's all the way we, the, our, the way our life experiences have shaped our view of the world that's what philosophy is right it's not like math two plus two is four that's not a philosophy that's fact two plus two is four all right so that the sun is hot that's not opinion that's fact okay that's not philosophy so i don't read a lot of philosophy books all right if you read 10 um money books i guarantee you're gonna see a bunch of differences in all of them if you read 10 dating coaches book, you're going to see a lot of differences in all of them. Just the way it is. We have our own, our life experience that has molded our way of thinking. That's the way it works. All right. And so what you can do is, and, and, and if you're somebody like me, you too old and you too set in your ways. To, <laughs> you know, maybe if you're somebody who's 21, you're impressionable. And so you read Robert Kiyosaki book or you read Corey Wayne book and, or, or you read my book. And you just go word for word off the Bible because you young and impressionable. You can't impress. I'm too old. I'm too old. You can't teach dog. I'm too old for somebody to change my view of the world. I'm too old. Now you can teach me something that's fact, but you can't teach me philosophy. I have my own philosophy. And I can't believe I just spent four minutes explaining what philosophy is. But anyway, guys, y'all know how I am. Y'all say y'all like the rambling. And you know it's bad when a man spent four minutes talking about how, uh, what, uh, about philosophy. All right, anyway, guys, let's get into the video. All right, so I'm going to break down all the aspects of money, guys. All right, here we go. Number one, guys, number one aspect of money. Well, let me, let me go and break down Robert Kiyosaki's uh, quadrant real quick because that's what I was going to touch on before I went on to that five-minute breakdown philosophy. Um, is that the video I've seen, he has four quadrants. Obviously, a quadrant is four fucking rocket science here right and on this side he has employee 
self-employed on this side and over here he has entrepreneur or business owner and investor okay if you read off the back if you notice right off the back on this side you're limited by how much money you can make you got to get the hell off of this side and get over here to this side if you want to get to the big bucks point blank period employee self-employed guys for all y'all guys who don't know what self-employee is yes you are an entrepreneur but yes it's self is you so yes you don't got to pay somebody overhead prices uh take me when i was working for the gym was the gym charged them 140 or whatever the fuck it was at the time 130 and they give you 40 dollars out of it okay when i went independent i kept the whole damn thing that's self-employed but you ain't got no employee so you still limited there's only so many hours in a day so although you're keeping all the money you're still limited by how many people you can train a day how many people can you train in a day 12 tops okay maybe 16 if you just ready to die in the gym right but you limit it so to get to that ultimate stage of wealth you have to get over here to business owner which means you have employees or an investor where your money is working for you so over here at the top at business owner you got people working for you making you money and over here you got money working for you making you money you only making you money an employee being the worst because your boss is taking a, the top whatever your boss is paying you is probably a fourth of what they're making okay so you want to at least get to self-employed so it's the steps you go from employee to self-employed to business owner to investor okay you can skip business owner and i'll explain that later but you can skip business owner and i'll explain that later as into why guys all right number one how much money you make is determined by how much value you bring to the world on the scale that you're bringing that value yes trash men bring tremendous value to the world i think we all can agree with that maintenance men bring a lot of value to the world unfortunately for those guys they're doing a low skill job and they're getting paid by the hour and yes even if you're getting paid by uh, <laughs> even if they're giving you a salary you're still getting paid by the hour because they've interpreted it that salary by the hour they ain't just pull a number in the hat no they just calculated what they wanted you to make per hour how many hours a week and that's how you got your fucking salary that's all it means and usually people who are on salary as you guys know get fucked they don't put you on salary and you get a 28 hour work week that ain't typically the way it works they put your ass on salary and they want your ass working 55 60 hours a week that's typically everybody I know who's been on salary. That's the way it works. I've never seen somebody on Saturday. Talking about, I'm on Saturday, 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 uh, salary, and I only got to work 22 hours. With. That ain't the way it worked. That ain't that that salary shit is the biggest con job I ever seen in my fucking life. And they trick your ass with that whole you get paid when you get take off, took it off. Ain't that what they got sick days for? You see how these motherfuckers trick your ass? Oh, you get a guaranteed check. You get your guaranteed hours. Motherfucker, I got 12 fucking goddamn sick days. What the hell I need a goddamn paid day off for? See how they trick you? You see how they get you? Make you feel good that if you need some time off, this and that and other, you get paid anyway. Knowing goddamn well everybody on salary got a, a guilty conscience when they take off a day because you know you're getting paid so you know you kind of feel bad when you take a salary day because you know you know you know you're getting paid for it who the hell want to be scum of the earth taking days off all the time when you know you're on salary i ain't never seen somebody on salary want to always take a whole bunch of days off so guys you got to bring a lot of value to the world you do not get paid because you are a nice guy this is the problem this is the biggest guys you know what fuck i said i was gonna get it i wasn't gonna get into it fuck it we gotta let the cat out the bag guys we gotta let the cat out the bag this millennial gen z bullshit 
where everybody think they're entitled to a nice check and a big house and a nice car because you breathe air and your dick can get hard that you're entitled to a nice set. That ain't the way the fucking world works. I'm sorry. If I could train somebody to do what you do before lunchtime, I'm not paying your ass no goddamn arm and a leg. If your ass ain't have to go somewhere and learn the shit, like even me as a personal trainer, guys, even me as a personal trainer, and I, and I, and I, I want y'all guys to listen to this good because I know a lot of y'all guys I've inspired to become personal trainers. Everybody, since I hear you two, I never had, like, had so many goddamn personal trainer questions. Everybody in the goddamn mama quitting their goddamn job to go be a personal trainer. But let me tell y'all guys something. The reason why I was successful as a personal trainer because I had been lifting and dealing, dealing with the shit, and nutrition and shit for years. 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 That's why I was able to do personal training. All those little kids who come in there with their little kinesiology degrees and all this other shit, this that they fail at the shit. Theory is not application. Coming there with all your goddamn book formulas and shit, talking about some the, the, the lat work, all this bullshit, and you ain't been doing this shit for years, you are going to fail. Now, I'm not saying you got to be old, because some people start working out 15, 16 years old. But if your ass ain't pick up a weight to six months ago and your ass studying NASM, you are going to fail as a trainer if your ass just starting that shit. I promise you that shit. You are going to fail. You are going to fucking kill somebody in that goddamn gym or you're not going to get them no fucking results. I say all that to say this right here, guys. There's no shortcut to success. Every skill that pays money, you got to go put some time in. That NASM certification is not going to help you on that goddamn. When you with that client and they want some results and when they paying you all that goddamn money to get them results and your ass don't know what the fuck you're doing, you're going to lose that client. You're not going to be a personal trainer very long. And all them goddamn little young kids who was at that damn gym trying to train people, I already knew they were going to fail with their big fancy degrees and all this other shit. Medal of Honor and all this other shit they come in there with don't got a goddamn thing to do when you train them goddamn clients. Ain't gonna help your ass one little bit. The amount of value you bring to somebody is how you get to the world is how you're going to get paid. You're not entitled to shit. You're entitled to breathe air and drink water. That's it. Everything else you have to earn. And the more you make is by how much people you can help in on, on a larger scale. Say, for instance, as a personal trainer, right? Well, I'm training client one on one. OK, but look at Barry's boot camp. How much money you think he making? Look how many people he training. How about uh, my man Chris Jones, Beast Mode Jones on YouTube? He helping people on a large scale. They buying his courses and stuff. He's doing it on a broader scale. So he's going to make more money than the person who's training the person individually. That's the way it works. So whatever you do, you got to figure out a way to do it on a larger scale. All right, guys. So I want to talk about the aspects of what you got to do to make these large sums of money. Let's talk about entertainment. All right. Because you really got entertainment, which is sports, athletes, singers, all that entertainment. So for all you guys who got a, a skill set as in something like that, where you want to do that. The thing with those guys is, guys, you got to bring some originality. There's no way around it. Now, typically, whatever you do in entertainment, somebody inspired it. That's the way it works. That's the way I see it, it always works. If you look at pretty much any comedian, or you talk to any actor, anything, any singer, they've been inspired by a few people more than likely. That's how I've never seen somebody just, you know, just want to wake up one day and I just want to be a singer for no fucking reason. That's not typically the way it works. Usually they saw somebody, they idolized somebody, and they decided that's what I want to do. The thing is, guys, you got to have some originality. Somebody can inspire you. But I promise you, you're never going to blow up being a carbon copy. 
If you think about all the singers, all the R&B singers, everybody who you know that's a singer, I guarantee you they got a unique sound. I guarantee you they got a unique sound. You might hear a little Beyonce or a little uh, Carrie Hilson, whoever in there, you know, because that person probably inspired them. But they got their own unique way of doing it. So if you're a guy that's in the entertainment and you want to pattern yourself as far as musician wise, rapping wise, whatever, any kind of entertainment, comedian, comedian wise, you got to find your own way of doing it. Professional wrestling wise, you got to find your own way. Like you take somebody like Hulk Hogan. He was obviously inspired by uh, Graham, superstar Graham, right? But you can see a lot of differences also. Yes, you can obviously see, I mean, he, he, he admitted it. it. ain't like I'm telling y'all breaking some world news. He, he's always said that superstar Billy Graham inspired him. But you can't convince me that you look at superstar Graham and Hulk Hogan and tell me they're a carbon copy. You can see he inspired them, but he got his own unique way of doing things. That's how you have to be. Somebody can inspire you, but you got to figure out a way to separate yourself from that person. The next thing, guys, is entrepreneurship. Typically, guys, in this situation here, as in entrepreneurship, you need to solve a problem. Now, with solving this problem, you can either find something that nobody has solved this type of particular problem, or you could take what somebody else already has done and add on to it and make it better. Case in point, guys, if you want to do something, like let's hypothetically say, I'm, and I know that y'all guys don't do that, but let's just say you want to be make TVs. And you're going to make a TV that's just like Sony. Nothing different, not, not, just, just like Sony. You're not going to succeed because Sony has however many fucking years of doing that shit and you haven't given people who buy TVs a reason to go away from a trusted brand like Sony to deal with your ass. So you got to get them a reason. Maybe your TV suck dick while people watch them. I don't fucking know. But you have to find a way to add on to what they've already done or solve a problem that nobody's even thought of yet. So that's how entrepreneurship, if, if you're going to do something in the service area, and you're going to do something like that, guys. And you're going to get, let's hypothetically say you're going to do a lawn service. You got to be able to do something to show people because you're going to have lawn service that have been in business for how many decades? So why would somebody deal with you? So you got to give them a reason to. As in, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, this is why a lot of businesses fail. Because you're going up against established brands, established brands, and you're trying to do exactly what an established brand has already been doing for many, many, many years. And people have loyalty to those brands. So if somebody's going to try to do what Amazon is doing, why the fuck would I switch from Amazon to come deal with you just because you got a goddamn nice web page? No. You got to give me a reason to, to build that business, guys. Okay, guys? So in entertainment, you got to have some originality. And as in entrepreneurship, you got to beat the competition that's already there. You need to one-up them or you need to solve a problem that somebody hasn't thought of yet. And here's the thing. When you solve that problem, somebody is going to copy you and try to one-up you. That's the way it works, guys. Somebody's going to take what you've done, even if you got a patent on it. I watch enough Shark Tank to see how this shit works. Somebody's going to take what you've done, and they're going to try to add on to it, change the variation of it a little bit. That's, that's the nature of businesses, guys. Next, guys, and this going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, but I got to say it. <clears throat> if you don't have good critical thinking skills, just don't get involved with entrepreneurship. There I said it. I've been the guy who's campaigned 
for entrepreneurship. Been on YouTube now over six years doing this fucking shit. And I've been campaigning entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. But up to about a year ago, I, I had a different revelation. And I realized something. And I and, and, and like y'all guys know, my, my way of thinking evolves. You sons of bitches ain't gonna hold me to the same talking points that I made 10 fucking years ago. My mind evolves. This is all part of philosophy. Your way of thinking evolves. So I tell y'all guys a story. I, I was like 18 years old. And this is like I was working at a temp job. And just as a temp job. And this lady sent me out here to this construction yard. And I remember this older guy at the time. 40, he had to be about maybe 45 to 50 years old. I'm just guessing. And I remember him telling me about we got to go stack these to the other side over there. Some, some uh, wood or whatever the fuck it was. I can't remember what it was. But it was something we had to go take, put on. This been a long time ago. And I remember him saying, because it wasn't as clear cut as I'm telling you guys now. It required some critical thinking to get it done. And I remember that guy said, saying, a lot of people in school, you put a math test in front of them, they make an A on it. You bring them out here and they fail. At the time, because I was young and didn't understand what the fuck he was saying, but I, now, me being older and wiser, and, and I've been figuring this out years ago, what he meant by that is, you have people that are educated, but they don't have good critical thinking skills. See, guys, there's a difference between education and critical thinking skills. Educated is, you read, you study books, you learn answers, you remember answers, and you can repeat answers. Critical thinking is there is no right or wrong way. You got to think on the fly. In other words, you can't go to school and somebody tell you to do this like that, like that. It requires some critical thinking. Do y'all guys get that? That's the same way entrepreneurship is. It's a lot of critical thinking skills. And a lot of people don't have those. A lot of people don't have a lot of awareness. Uh, you know able to just think on their own so you know you know you i don't know you but like my main chick that i deal with now she does not have, she's a very educated she could tell you to, she is one of those jeopardy like motherfuckers i'm talking about just know the most goofiest could tell you what the carpet material is made out of i'm talking about just i i said girl you need to go on jeopardy just know the most. I'm like, who the fuck went to school and learned this and thought that this is going to help me in life? I have no fucking idea who sat down and said, I'm going to study this and this is going to improve my life. This is going to increase my earning potential. I have no fucking idea with the shit. She, she can tell you what glass made out of, how they make it. I mean, she know all these stupid ass Jeopardy questions. Ain't got a look of critical thinking skills. At all. Sometimes we be boxed in, like uh, she be driving, and she be like, "Daddy, which way I go? Which which what what way you think I should go?" And I'm just thinking to myself, "This girl ain't got a lick of critical thinking skills. A lick." And that, this ain't me knocking her, cause a lot of people are like this. But you gotta know if that's you. Cause if it ain't you, then you just stick to your high income earning skills. Okay, guys. And what I mean by that is you stay over here to the self-employed side. Now, here's the thing, guys, and I did the math on this right before I turned on the video. Let's hypothetically say you got a high income earning skill, right? Let's say you're making 150 a year at, with that high income earning skill. I did the math on this. And let's say you invested $2,000 a month and you did that for 50 years. So let's hypothetically say from age 21 to 71, $2,000 a month. And you didn't, as, as inflation and shit went up, you just kept putting the same $2,000 in there, right? For 50 years. By the time you got 71 years old, 71 years old. And I want you guys to know that that $2,000, if you invest it into a 401k, it'd be tax deductible. Okay. I want you guys to know that. It'd be tax deductible, which means that 
The IRS will only tax you on about 125 and not that 150 minus your other deduction before your other deductions, right? So I won't put that out there. Did you have almost $30 million? It was a little over 28, almost $29 million by the time you got 71 years old. So you can do it being self-employed. It just takes longer. Okay, guys. So I just wanted to put that out there. They don't think, oh, well, I don't got good critical thinking skills. It's old for me. No, 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 no. You can do it. You do it a lot more slower. But from age 21 to 71, if you make making $150,000 a year and you invested $2,000 a month into your our, uh, 401k, you have a little over $28 million. So it can be done. So yes, I will say for some of the guys who've been in my comments saying for years that entrepreneurship ain't for everybody, you know, now me uh, evaluating and, and, and y'all guys want to know where this came from. This actually came from me, you know, talking to this chick all this long time. And I'm just like, if she started a business, I can almost guarantee it would fail. Because all that education ain't going to have shit to do with your adaptability and all this other shit. Awareness, perceptiveness, all that education and knowing what a, a, a duck's beak is made of and where ducks come from and all this other shit. That's great and dandy for Jeopardy. When you're watching Jeopardy, all that little stupid shit helps out a whole lot. All that great education if you want to go win Jeopardy. But in real life, in the field, it's critical thinking skills. It's critical thinking skills. Now, in whatever your field is, you would need to be, need to be educated in said field. Right? You would need to be educated. But I'm telling you right now, if you ain't got no critical thinking skills, I'm telling you right now, you're going to waste your money. I don't care how educated you is. I don't care you're valedictorian, a 4.0 GPA. If you don't got no critical thinking skills, that's why when you, they do the IQ test, they don't sit there and ask you uh, to do math problems. and What they do, deductive reasoning and all that other shit. They don't even, the IQ test has nothing to do with how educated you are. It's all deductive reasoning and all this other shit. That's all it is. Critical thinking. It don't ask you, who was the third president of the United States? It don't, it don't got nothing to do with education. <clears throat> Next, guys. Don't invest into the stock market or real estate if you have your own business outside of your retirement accounts. And even then, as far as your retirement accounts, I would do a little something i know it's tax deductible but guys you got to understand you're investing in yourself you got guys your business is going to need every dollar you can get your hand on you got guys listen nobody nobody is finna sit around and let you conquer error and, and area and nobody ain't gonna try to come in and get a piece of that pie Amazon doing that online shit. Walmart is trying to come for them. Will they be able to overtake them? I don't fucking know, but they trying. They are trying. Walmart is trying. The point where I'm trying to tell you guys is your competitors are going to be trying to come for your head. A damn that real estate, damn that stock market investing in other people's businesses. Because you know that's what happens when you invest into the stock market. You're giving them money to build their business. Yeah, I know they, they growing your money, your investment, but your main investment, your business, that's where most of your money should be going, if not all. If not all, guys. People start business and stuff like this and then they thinking they smart, I'm diversifying. You gonna be diversified, all right? Right out of goddamn business because your goddamn competitors are goddamn trying to think of a way to put your ass out of business. You're going to be diversified, all right. You're going to be plenty diversified. Ready down the deployment line. Your business is going to take all the energy you need. Every dollar you can put your hand on outside of your living expenses need to be into that business and beating your competitors. That's 
that is one of the most things I see in uh, business owners do. They th they get to making a little money and then they want to start fucking with real estate and all this other bullshit thing and they smart and all that shit. A damn of real estate. Reinvest into your business. Next, guys, don't pay taxes unless you can't get a return on investment with investing more money. Like, say me, guys. I pay a lot of taxes because my business, I'm not able to do a lot. I'm not able to do a lot of tax deductions. But like y'all guys know, I told y'all guys I'm going to do the staffing agency. And when I do the staffing agency, I'm going to put all my money into the business outside. I might cut myself. I might say $100,000 a year of living expenses and live off that and everything else going into the business. So I, the business might make $5 million a year and I'm going to reinvest $4.9 million back into the goddamn business. And I'll live off $100. You can take tax out of that. This right here, what, what I'm doing is not, I don't have a lot of overhead. And so I do pay a lot of taxes. But if I could, if, 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 if it was some way that I thought that I could invest into this and get a return on investment, I would. But I can't. If there's nothing, if I go in right now and got a big glamorous studio, it's a big, nice $100,000 studio, is my views going up? Y'all think I would get more views? Do y'all? Because I don't think so. I think the views will stay the same. Y'all want to know how I know? I've seen people on YouTube try to do shit like that. The market is what the market is. As a dating coach, this is the market. There's not, it's not like my views are going to go to $3 million because I go out and get a big, a, a 3 million views just because I got a big fancy studio. It's not. The views will be the exact same as they is now. So it's, what's the point? But if you can get a return on investment out of that money, I would invest everything back into that business. That's what I would do. Fuck taxes. I got to pay them now because I don't got no lot of overhead. But when I get that staffing agency, I'm going to spend money on marketing. So case in point with the YouTube. About three years ago, I tried to do those uh, Google ad things where they, where they uh, put your put your channel in front of people and shit like that. And I spent like $4,000, like two months in a row. My income that I bought in stayed the same. It was just what I thought. It stayed the same. Now I gave Google that $4,000 two months in a row because I set the limit at $4,000 for the ad thing and my money. So that's just $4,000 I just lost. It didn't create no additional revenue. And that's exactly what I'm saying with this. The market is the market. The amount of guys looking for dating advice, it is what it is. So whether I'm butt naked in, in, in the mounds doing it or in a $300,000 studio or whatever the fuck ever, the views are going to be the views. It's only a certain amount of guys who are looking for this type of advice. And that's just what it is. So you need to make sure that, in other words, what I'm saying is, when I say don't pay taxes, but only don't do it if it makes sense. Because if you're going to go invest money into the business, reinvest all that money into the business, and it don't create additional income, well, then you did nothing. You've been better off, you've been better off paying the taxes, and then that way you had some money to invest somewhere else. That's what I do. I, my business is not a scalable like that. Like, I reached the top of my business. There's nothing else that I can do that it, this is this is the limit of what the, the, the dating business is i'm i'm as far as male dating nobody's still fucking with me i'm not talking about that crybaby content no don't, don't give me that crybaby that that damn black pill bullshit where they sit around and make reaction videos to female nature all day i'm not talking about that bullshit yes yeah, a bunch of them crybabies i'm talking about guys who are looking for actual res things results actions not crying about some girl Oh, woman hits man, instantly regret it. Yeah, I ain't talking about that little crybaby ass shit. Yeah, I'm, yeah, there's a bunch of them motherfuckers get way more views than me. Yeah, if I start crying about female nature every day, I'm quite sure my views would go sky high. Yeah, there's a bunch of crybabies around. I'm talking about guys who actually want to 
change some things and improve their day night life instead of crying about female nature all the goddamn time. Fucking puss ass content. It make no goddamn sense. Y'all know it don't make no goddamn sense. You know, I'm crying all day about woo, woo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tend to say only five percent of men on Tinder get matches. Who the fuck? Okay, god damn. Make my dick itch. Next, guys. Don't forget to live. I, I've said this before, guys. Don't, uh, guys. Listen. I'm all for being smart with your money. I'm all for that, guys. But about uh, maybe a month ago, I don't know how it came up on my thing, uh, but on my YouTube suggestions. But I got this uh, 70s, name that 70s theme song. I said, oh, let me click on this. And it had an 80s, two and a 90s. Clicked on the 70s. And it showed all these shows that used to play when I was young, right? Because they was in syndication when I was like in the 80s, right? So these are shows that came out in the 70s, but they were still around. Some of them still around now, right? And then I was like, oh, shit. So then I go, I just go and Google just to see, you know, damn, is the, who's still living? Who? And I'm just like surprised at how many of these people that I grew up to when I was, you know, seven eight nine ten eleven twelve years old listening to all these shows and stuff laverne and shirley and uh so many uh so many goddamn shows. i can't remember what it was a bunch of them y'all know happy days it's a bunch of them i can't remember all the goddamn shows right but they were just naming the tunes and i was just surprised at how many of those people are dead the point what i'm saying guys is at one time those people were my age or your age and now they dead you don't live forever and so while I'm all for you being frugal, y'all want to know where a lot of this shit come from? I think everybody assume they're going to live to be 100. Like when we all think of old age and stuff, we all think of 100. You ain't living to no 100. You'll be lucky to make it to 75. And guys, and that is the honest truth. You'll be lucky to make it to 75. So a lot of y'all guys think, okay, I'm 25. I got 75 more years. You ain't got no 75 more years to live, boo. You'll be lucky to make it to 75. Seriously. And so with what I'm telling you guys is I'm all for you investing, save your money, but make sure that you live life. This is why I tell you guys now grind Monday through Friday and keep the weekends to socialize and live. I, I wholeheartedly believe that because life is too short. Look at Kevin. Kevin look, was a healthy young man. Wasn't sickly, sick as far as I know. Look, life is not guaranteed, guys. So while all this sacrifice and stuff and delayed gratification is good, but make sure that it, you are balanced with your living because tomorrow ain't guaranteed. And you likely ain't living to 100, unfortunately. And last, guys, and I put this in at the end because I should have put it in earlier, but I put it in at the end when I was taking my notes. Do not fuck with your emergency fund under no circumstances unless it's an emergency. What happens, guys, is the market goes up, Bitcoin goes up. Oh, shit, let me go dip into my emergency fund. Let me get in on this. Guys, do not fuck with your emergency fund. I don't care what deal Black Friday's got going on. I don't care if Lil Pookie's selling his goddamn car for $3,000 and it's worth $13,000. Do not fuck with your emergency fund. Your emergency fund could be the difference between you falling flat on your ass. Every time I fell on my ass in life was because I didn't have no cushion. You're going to need that emergency fund one fucking day. I can guarantee fucking tea it. And if you don't got one, this is what bankrupts people. This is how people end up moving back home with mama. This is how people end up going in debt. What happens when you go in debt? With these high-ass interest rate guys, you can never get out of it. If you end up going in debt 
on your credit card, unless you have a money windfall, I promise you, you're going to die in that fucking debt. You go, you go and rack up fucking seven, eight thousand dollars on one of these goddamn thirty percent credit cards, and tell me when you paying that shit off. Tell me when you paying it off. They got you for life. You'll look up in ten years, and that eight thousand now is goddamn twenty-two thousand, if not more, because it's compounding. So guys, I'm telling you right now, I don't care what opportunity you think comes your way or this is a great deal or Black Friday selling TVs for $50. Do not fuck with that emergency fund. Six to 12 months worth of living expenses. And you don't fuck with it unless it's an emergency. All right, guys. All right, guys. I hope y'all guys learned something from this. I'll get back with you guys next time.